1997, when I was 24 years old, I began my career as a teacher and coach with the Ben Lapine School District. As you can see, I'm no longer 24 years old. I'm now 51 years old. And for over half of my lifetime, I <clears throat> served as a teacher and coach at Mountain View High School. I am now able to look back on my career that was ended early. By the grace of God alone, I was given the opportunity to be a teacher and a coach. And by the grace of God, I was a teacher of character and accountability. I held the line with students tirelessly on things like cell phones, dress codes, language, and tardies. I provided a safe place with expectations in my classroom. My life as a teacher was always about relationships, building these relationships in order to gain the trust of students, hoping to help them grow into a person that would be a good student, husband, wife, parent, friend, and contribution. I was the teacher that would take the time to stop and talk with students like Ethan Miller who my son and I would stop almost every morning and talk to in the hallways as he walked by himself before school. After 26 years of faithful service, on Monday, October 18th, 2021, I was told that I wasn't able to report to work because I didn't comply with the COVID-19 vaccine mandate. On Tuesday, October 19th, I was cut off from my emails. On Wednesday, October 20th, I could no longer log in to my computer. I was asked to turn in my keys and my computer. I was put on unpaid leave of absence, not because I abandoned my job, but because I wasn't allowed to enter the building that I had taught at for 26 years. One week prior to the October 18th mandate, Yolanda Webb and Zach Webb and myself, who were both also employees who did not comply, as you guys know, um, with the mandate, um, had a Zoom meeting with Steve Cook. And a direct quote from that meeting in regards to signing the religious exception, Steve Cook told us, just sign the form. It will be approved. It's the lowest bar to meet in order to keep your job. Um, I felt very coerced by this statement, and my job was being dangled in front of me. My decision to not comply to the mandate was threefold. Number one, the vaccine was authorized as an emergency use vaccine. I felt there wasn't enough time or effort put into researching that vaccine in order for it to be safe. Lately, we've heard Dr. Anthony Fauci clearly state that the vaccine is largely ineffective. We're also seeing the CDC admit to the many health implications that the vaccine has caused. For example, myocarditis. <clears throat> um, according to the Oregon Health Authority, in the month of July 2022, 53% of the cases in Oregon were from vaccinated people. These OHA numbers show that you're actually at a lower risk of contracting COVID when you're not vaccinated. My second reason for not complying was that I did not want to give up my God-given constitutional rights by signing an exception. I also did not agree with the terms of the attestation that every employee who did a religious exception had to sign. I felt like that was a form of discrimination. There were two parts to that attestation. Number one, wearing a special mask when doing things like observing kids eating lunch. And the second was testing once a week. Uh, Lastly, my third reason was that I wasn't willing to put my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as the lowest bar. I could have legitimately done a religious exception, but I don't serve a God of convenience. I serve him in the highs and lows of my life. He is the very foundation that I stand on every day. God made all things. He owns all things, and he controls all things. I'm not asking for or expecting to be taken off of unpaid leave of absence. In fact, I've already made the decision that I will not work for Ben Lapine School District ever again. I am expecting a full apology 
for being wrongfully put on unpaid leave of absence, as well as full compensation for the loss of salary and benefits for the past year. The whole vaccine mandate was never about safety, and the public right now deserves to hear the truth about that. I know of at least one person who was not vaccinated and signed no papers, yet was allowed to coach the whole spring sports season this year, with no question. I also know of two teachers who are still teaching, who tested, or first of all, were never asked once to wear a special mask, and tested the first week and never tested again, and were not questioned. <clears throat> Um, earlier in the summer, um, Zach Webb and Yolanda Webb and I had a meeting with Steve uh, Cook and Steve Heron. And to quote Steve Heron uh, during that meeting, um, he said, it was not our job to keep track of who was wearing the masks or testing. If this mandate was truly about the safety of the kids, then yes, I believe it was your responsibility. To be clear, I'm not anti-vax. The people should have a choice with no consequences. Just as in Oregon, a mother has a choice to kill her unborn child, a person should also have the choice whether to get an experimental emergency use vaccine that's unproven and severely under-researched. My body, my choice. St. Charles Hospital, where the most vulnerable and compromised people reside, have now lifted their vaccine mandate. Yet, it continues on in the world of education in Oregon. Even our president, Joe Biden, has declared, guess what? The pandemic is over. It's time for the vaccine mandate to be lifted for all people across our country. I'd like to end with two quotes. One is a stark warning by God for all of us, and it's from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. <clears throat> but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, <clears throat> traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. These are the sorts that are loaded down with sins and led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Jonas and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will not progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest or made clear to all. And then lastly, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. And this is in regards to those of us that have influence on children. And it reads, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin or to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were down, drowned in the depth of the sea. Thank you. <clears throat>